Now here's a show that could rival The Simpsons in terms of how many laps it gets out of me. Bob's Burgers was created by Lauren Bouchard, co-creator of one of my other all-time favorite shows, Home Movies, which first introduced me to the outstanding voice of H. John Benjamin. Coach, do you think I'm stupid? Of course you're stupid, Brendan. Okay. All kids are stupid. Like The Simpsons, it's an animated comedy about a quirky family just trying to get by in a town full of colorful characters, rival neighbors, oddball educators, and a heartless God, upper class. Please, Mr. Fish Oder, do something. I have kids. Oh, come on, Bob. Those kids aren't that great. But I don't mean to keep comparing it to The Simpsons because it really is its own thing. Unlike Homer, Bob is pretty level-headed and really good at his job. He puts a lot of thought and passion into his work, and when people try his food, they always end up loving it. So what stupid burger are you making, Bob? Okay, well, it's not stupid, it's smart. I call it the bet it all on black garlic burger. It's made stupid with- Stupid name. What? Stupid name. <laughs> oh my god. It's made with black garlic, uh, it's a fermented garlic. We want to try that black garlic burger. Can I have a black garlic burger too? Linda is happy-go-lucky and always looking for excuses to perform. Who is that? number Ugh. yeah tina is the socially awkward teenage girl struggling her way into adolescence and always trying her best to define herself jean is a total goofball with a passion for music and louise is incredibly cunning intelligent and nefarious she has a pretty dark sense of humor and enjoys manipulating other people for her own amusement it's made with human remains from the crematorium next door <gasps> strong family loyalty though at the end of the day it's always the belchers versus the world and honestly, each of these characters is so lovable for different reasons, my favorite one varies depending on which episode I'm watching. Today's piece kicks off a new series I'm going to be starting, featuring familiar animated locations. And this is a list that keeps growing and growing and growing and growing, and I'm looking forward to getting into all of them. But for today, let's pay tribute to Bob's Burgers. Now, we could do this as one big flat piece, but I'm going to be making mine three layers. There's the sidewalk in the foreground, the storefront, and the interior slash side buildings. And so we don't have to worry about board lines and paper creases, I'll be making the design backwards on the pegboards and flipping it over when we mount to the canvas. Okay, just a reminder that once your piece is pretty well ironed, pay a little extra attention to the rows of beads where the boards meet. That's where board lines come from. It's not a huge deal here since we'll be displaying the unironed side. Just make sure they got fused together, or else your piece will fall apart when you pick it up. Once you have it all pretty well ironed, lift it up off the pegboard and proceed to go over it a few more times on the flat table to get a nice, consistent finish. I'm not even pressing down on the iron here, just moving it slowly back and forth, letting the heat do the work. Then place some big heavy books on the piece to keep it flat while it cools. Now this storefront piece is going to be one layer under the sidewalk piece, so I'll put an extra row of beads at the bottom here to give us a little slack in the gluing process. I know it can be intimidating to iron pieces this big, but just relax, envision how you're going to do it. I recommend moving from the top right corner and working your way over slowly. If it doesn't go perfectly for you, don't panic, just fix it as you go. Maybe lie some heavy books on parts of it to keep it from curling up on you. Remember, this side won't be seen, so don't worry too much about paper wrinkles. Just do your best to fuse it together. You can kind of see the beads melting through the paper, so after inspecting to make sure you've got them all at least somewhat fused, again, we'll lift it up off the pegboards and go over it for a consistent finish.
And that's our first interior piece done. And since this is going to be under the storefront layer, just like before, I'll do another row on the outside to give us some wiggle room when we glue everything together. probably figured out that this piece has these rows empty here because this interior piece is behind the door. Let's fill those in along with the extra outer ring. Now we'll do the buildings on the side. And I'm realizing that the open sign would actually be flush against the door, so let's make that separate so it can be raised up on the same layer as the storefront. And here's the burger sign that sticks out the top, too. Alright, time to assemble! First things first, I'm going to attach the interior pieces to the back of the storefront. Just line up that outer ring we gave ourselves and hot glue along the seam where the pieces meet. Like most steps in this craft, don't rush and take your time. The glue should completely dry in just a minute or two. Go around and do that to every side, then do the same to the interior door piece. Okay, now before we add the buildings on the side and the sidewalk piece, I'm going to sturdy this up with some black foam core. Now let's put the buildings on the side. This is a little tricky because the side building pieces are so thin, but it's the exact same concept, just glue the seams. Now the sidewalk is the foreground, so we'll be gluing the storefront to the back of it here. Overlap that extra row we put on the bottom, and, you guessed it, glue the seam. Once the sidewalk is attached, we'll need to put some layers of black foam core on the back so it's even with the interior pieces. How many should we put? If you said two, you are correct, because there's one layer to be even with the storefront piece, and then one more to be even with the interior. That should do it! Clean up any little strands of glue that might be in the way, and let's have a look at this bad boy! Wow, I don't mean to brag, but this looks even better than I thought it would! Be careful, because it's still a little fragile until we mount it onto a canvas. Speaking of which, notice that I painted the sides of the canvas here so it would blend better in with the piece. Always go that extra mile. Hot glue the back of the piece, making sure to get the edges, and flip it over to the canvas. You'll have a few seconds to line it up properly, and you're done! Beautiful! I think this new location series is off to a pretty great start. Click the link in the description to get all the patterns to make your own, absolutely free, and you have my Pixel Pals on Patreon to thank for that. And an extra special thanks to my Pixel producers! These guys are the reason I can keep making these videos! Want to see your name here and become a partner of the Pixel Art Shop? Click the Patreon link there and consider becoming a Pixel patron! Lots of never-before-seen goodies and sneak peeks await you! Thanks for watching, everybody! I'll see you again soon!